Let's move on to a really interesting paper about sucralose. So sucralose is Splenda. And in any average grocery store, there are over 3,000 products with Splenda and carbohydrates in them. And as you'll see in this paper, when they gave Splenda sweetened drinks to humans, Splenda by itself did not seem to cause problems for insulin sensitivity. But Splenda plus carbohydrates created major problems. In fact, in this study by Dana Small, who's the lead author at, I believe she's at Yale and another Northeastern University, she's a psychologist, they actually had to terminate the trial in adolescents early because there was such profound insulin sensitivity dysregulation in the study. So this is really worth reading, guys. This study is incredible and really scary for any of you eating anything with sucralose and carbohydrates in it. This is all quorum sensing, all gut disruption aside at the level of the brain and vagal signaling to the brain from the gut, sucralose plus carbohydrates appears to cause all sorts of problems with carbohydrate tolerance, glucose tolerance. This is why diabetics especially should not be eating artificial sweeteners. The title of this paper, short-term consumption of sucralose with but not without carbohydrate impairs neural and metabolic sensitivity to sugar in humans. That right there is all you need to know. How many of you only eat Splenda by itself, ever? You never have uh, any sort of artificial sweetener containing beverage or any of these artificial sweeteners with anything that has carbohydrates. It almost never happens. So you are consuming, if you're consuming artificial sweeteners, you are consuming their aspartame, ACE-K, saccharin, or sucralose with carbohydrates. And though this paper is just with sucralose, I have concerns that the same thing may be happening with all the other artificial sweeteners, at least from that class that I mentioned, because of the way that it creates a mismatch in your body. There is neural signaling at the level of the gut that says, this is sweet, but the amount of carbohydrates or the amount of nutrients, this being calories from the sugars, are not lining up. And that causes your body to go haywire. It's almost like you're giving the car the wrong type of gas, in my opinion. This is the analogy I would suggest here. You have a diesel car, you don't put unleaded fuel into the diesel car. You don't put diesel fuel into your unleaded car. You don't put water into your gas tank. You don't put alcohol into your gas tank. And I have a car that has add blue fluid. So it has this emissions controlling fluid. And I learned the hard way that if I don't watch people at the gas station, they will put diesel in the add blue fluid. And that caused me to have to redo the whole add blue pump and everything. But this is what's happening to, I think, the body when you're eating things like artificial sweeteners with carbohydrates, which happens the majority of the time for us, let's be honest for us as humans. You're giving the car the wrong type of fuel, it confuses the car, and it's changing the way your body responds to glucose, and your insulin sensitivity uh, is damaged, and you become intolerant to glucose. It should be noted in this study that this was two weeks, and over those two weeks, the sucralose plus carbohydrates drink was given seven times over two weeks. It's not even every day. So you can see here the results in terms of the insulin sensitivity um, in the sucralose plus carbohydrates group. And this, I believe, is the change in fasting insulin in adolescents. And as you can see here, the pre versus post was really out of line. That's caused them to um, stop the experiment in adolescents because the fasting insulin went absolutely haywire in these adolescents who were drinking sucralose with carbohydrates. So this experiment, this set of experiments is really scary for anyone eating sucralose or artificial sweeteners with carbohydrates. Do not let your children do this. This is a problem for humans. Again, I don't see any reason to have these artificial sweeteners in your diet. So that was sucralose. I want to talk a little bit about aspartame. This study is in animals, but it is really scary. So the title is transgenerational transmission of aspartame-induced anxiety and changes in the glutamate GABA signaling and gene expression in the amygdala. Transgenerational transmission. So in these C57BL6 mice, which are a common mouse used in these experiments, giving aspartame at doses that were a fraction, eight to 15% of the FDA-recommended maximum human daily intake equivalents um, 
induced anxiety behaviors, which were passed on to their offspring. You can see here in the abstract, even more strikingly, the anxiety-like behavior in response, uh, its response to diazepam and changes in the amygdala gene expression were transmitted to male and female offspring in two generations descending from the aspartame-exposed males. Men, <laughs> if you are eating aspartame, I don't think we know this for sure, but this is scary about the effects in all levels of the body being transmitted to your offspring. Extrapolation of the findings to humans suggests that aspartame consumption at doses below the FDA recommended maximum daily intake may produce neurobehavioral changes in aspartame consuming individuals and their descendants. That's really scary. Again, why in the world are we consuming these foods? As they say here today, aspartame is found in nearly 5,000 food products consumed by men, women, pregnant women, and children. Its annual production is 3,000 to 5,000 metric tons worldwide. Unreal. Unreal. FDA, ended, FDA recommended maximum daily uptake is 50 milligrams per kilogram. Again, in these mice, they used 8 to 15% of the FDA recommended maximum equivalents in the animals. So they were using really small doses of aspartame in these mice, seeing anxiety-like behaviors that were extinguished with diazepam, which is a benzodiazepine, seeing them pass on to their offspring of males, seeing changes in the brain, the amygdala specifically. This is a problem. <laughs> you should not be eating foods with aspartame. What foods have aspartame? Oh, I don't know, like Diet Coke. <laughs> so I'm going to do a reel about this on Instagram, but what's the difference between Coke Zero and Diet Coke? Both of them contain aspartame, but I believe Coke Zero has ACE-K plus aspartame. So Coke Zero has ACE-K, ASOFAME-K, which I'm going to talk about in a moment, and Diet Coke just has aspartame. So if you're drinking Diet Coke, this uh, does not bode well for your offspring if you're a male or even transgenerational. Potentially, this is a problem for females as well. Is it inducing anxiety behaviors in females that can be passed on to offspring? We don't know fully, but this is pretty striking. Again, we haven't talked about the gut disrupting effects. And as I tried to say at the beginning of the podcast, why not just sweeten your foods with things like honey, maple syrup, or fruit or fruit juice, preferably an organic fruit juice, whatever you want to do. But I, I think that most of you would understand that Diet Coke is not benign. I want to make very clear that energy drinks with these artificial sweeteners are not benign. Uh, the Diet Red Bulls, the sugar-free monsters, all these energy drinks are problematic because they're containing these artificial sweeteners. So there are things in our diets that many of you may be using to go to the gym, et cetera, that are problematic from both a gut perspective, from a glucose intolerance perspective, from an insulin resistance perspective, which is really a synonym for what I just mentioned, from an anxiety perspective, changes in the brain, potentially heritable two generations in mice, and again, sucralose plus carbohydrates creating massive problems in humans, uh, according to Dana's small study. So what are we doing? What are we doing? 